I hope you're, oh, uh, already moved. <laughs> so hi, everyone. I hope you're doing well today. Uh, and I uh, just want to kind of, again, continue our conversation about lecture six, nucleation and growth. Uh, and specifically today, we are going to be talking about 2D grain growth. So we've already dealt with uh, basically how do we deal with some type of curvature. And if we have a grain boundary here, you know, will that grain, where is it going to move? Uh, we have material one, material two here. We know Material one has a chemical potential greater than, excuse me, that. Chemical potential of one is greater than chemical potential of two. So we know atoms are going to flow from here to here, and then the interface is going to move uh, in this way. So we've covered that. We know how to deal with that in terms of uh, curvature. We know how to deal with it in terms of stress. We know how to deal with it in terms of flux. So now we are going to look at essentially 2D grain growth. So 2D right here. So it's going to be the same as, uh, essentially example, but now we're going to try to figure out, okay, for a given, um, so typically they'll be dealing with 2D grains, they'll have some kind of surface, and they will have, um, basically we're going to characterize, and much more in lecture seven, they're going to have some grain size or average grain size R bar. So we want to see how will those grains grow in time. So specifically, how will this scale with T? So in time, how will the grain size grow? Is it going to shrink? Is it going to grow? How is it going to scale with time? What is the scaling parameter here? Because again, in material science, we're not, we don't care about, uh, and you should not care about 10 or 20% uh, increases. We're looking at order of magnitude increases. So I'm just going to erase that here. So how do we figure out, or how can we derive uh, basically that expression? How is our bar going, to, uh, how is the average grain size going to scale with time? So to do that, we are going to use a couple of equations that we've used previously and some other um, kind of approximations. So we've shown you, uh, or we, this is an equation you absolutely should remember here, where we remember that kappa could either be uh, our curvature plus or minus 2 over r for a sphere. So we know that stress is related to, again, curvature. So let's look uh, at our presentation. I'm going to flip over here real quick. Uh, we do not need to look at that guy, although Bell reaction curves we know are very important. Let's look at two grains. So I have grain one at time equals time one. As we evolve, time one is going to be, uh, excuse me, not less than. Time two is greater than time one. So at some later time, we are going to grow our grain from R1 to R2. So there's an approximation. So we want to kind of describe, well, how does this scaling occur? How does this change my uh, curvature? Because we have... This, again, is your grain size. So let me write this. I know, sorry for the confusing notation, but as we mentioned before, this is our radius of curvature as before. So our radius of curvature. So we want to be able to see how does grain size change um, as a function of these other kind of parameters here. So what we're going to do is make uh, some... An approximation that's a little uh, kind of rough, but again, it's an approximation that someone's valid. So I'm going to, we know that this is uh, time one. I'm going to erase just a little bit right here. One second. And now let's see where we can make an approximation. So how does, as the grain size grows, how does our radius of curvature, how will it change? Or is there a relationship between them? Well, the relationship between them is actually this. So R1, the radius of curvature initially, divided by the grain size is going to be equal to, excuse me, let me erase, apologize here, you know me, handwriting is not good initially, that's why, again, this is all written in LaTeX, <laughs> so R1 is equal to R2 over R2 is going to be equal to 2 over K, and again, sorry for this notation, this is not kappa, this is just a, uh, oh, excuse me again, uh, I apologize. Not here. This is going to be equal to 2k, where this is just a constant. Now, uh, this is going to be uh, very uh, interesting here. So now this is just a constant. So that's just the relationship as you know as that radius of curvature changes or as the grain size changes. So you can now rewrite this expression and get. Uh, basically a average, so this is our radius of curvature, so our average radius of curvature is just going to be 2 over r bar, 
So the average, you know, this is the grain size of time one. That's the grain size. R2 is the, the grain size is time two. This is just your average grain size. Average grain size of material. So your average radius of curvature is just going to be 2 over r bar. And we could rewrite that in terms of that constant k that we just introduced there, 1 over k r bar. And more importantly, we had this relationship previously that uh, this, our stress, excuse me, our stress is equal to 2 gamma kappa, right? So your average stress is going to be 2 gamma times your kappa average. We can now plug in your average stress is going to be equal to 2 gamma uh, of your grain boundary over k r bar, your average grain size. This is important, again, so this is a, you know, again, a rough, you know, kind of estimate. This is kind of an almost, you know, semi like empirical it's just some approximation that that's you know that the ratio of the radius of curvature over your grain size but this is the important kind of expression that we eventually get uh, to right here so because we could use this now going back so again if you don't want to <laughs> deal with my horrible handwriting the same kind of derivation is shown here just rearrange the math and again this is the important equation to have because now we can write the rate of change of the grain size so the rate of change of the grain size is just going to be, uh, sorry, I'm going to flip back one more time, how fast this interface, this interface moves. So we have that expression for the velocity of an interface right here that we've discussed previously. So we're going to pull back that expression into this 2D grain growth derivation. So I'm going to go to the next page, and we are going to see the rate of change of our grain size, dr bar, so that's the rate of change with respect to time, is just going to be twice the velocity of that interface. So it's twice the velocity because of uh, the opposing boundaries on a grain. So again, it's just a factor of two. It's not going to matter too much. So, but again, we pull that expression, v equals m sigma. Again, that's a really critical expression. We rewrite this. We know, uh, we know now that stress is going to be this uh, 2 gamma db over k r bar. Substitute that in, so now you have your dr dt is equal to 4 gamma db, just plugging in, uh, m divided by kr bar. And I could do, you know, I love Mathematica, but even I can kind of do this separation of variables uh, integration, right? So separate the r's and the t's, so dr bar, we want to integrate that uh, times r bar equals 4 gamma gb m divided by k r bar. You do that, integrate this, so this becomes uh, basically r bar squared minus r not squared. So your initial, and then you just pull up, uh, again, this is going to be divided by 2, and that's going to be equal to this whole thing times t. So a little bit clearer right here. Not even going to try to attempt it. So once you do the integration, this is our integration here. So this is our critical expression, and it tells us, again, that average grain size scaling. So let me erase uh, now over here. How does this grain size, size scale with time? Well, we have, again, we can see right here. So r, r bar scales as t to the one half. So that is our scaling. The average grain size grows as t to the one half uh, power. So that power here is t to the one half for this 2D grain growth. Now, what else is in here? Again, gamma GB, that's a constant. K is definitely constant. What's in M? Well, as we talked about previously in the last video, M has two parameters that we could play, or actually one parameter that we could play with, that we could tune as engineers. And that is T, temperature. So temperature here is given in that exponential minus, some um, again, energy over KT divided by T. Again, there's other parameters in here. Look back in the last video. But again, we can control this T. We can control this T. And again, 
that exponential growth is going to beat out this linear growth uh, almost every you know kind of scenario here. So temperature is how we could increase. We can't change the scaling with time, but we could increase essentially. You know, you can imagine if you plot uh, basically a log log plot, you could change the slope, uh, or that slope is going to be the same, but you could change the y-intercept uh, that uh, basically r bar or that r bar you know uh, scaling. So if we plotted, for example, so the log log of r bar divided by log of t, t of the log of t, the slope here would always be the half, but your y-intercept could change depending on those parameters. But again, the key factor here is this is our scaling, and then we could tune essentially how fast uh, that grain growth grows via t in this m equation. Now, one last thing about 2D grain growth. So we have this kind of nice expression, but one question you might be asked, uh, and one really nice kind of derivation that uh, was derived by a guy named von Neumann. So the von Neumann, we're going to talk right now really quickly about the von Neumann n equals 6 uh, principle, or n equals 6 rule. So let me finish erasing. You know it takes me forever, not like on the whiteboard. <laughs> so let's talk about the von Neumann. Neumann n equals 6 rule. So, if the number of sides on my grain, so if the number of sides, n is the number of sides, so, that number of sides, the number of sides is equal to 6, dr, dt, for that particular grain, is 0. So that grain will, not sh will neither shrink or grow. If the number of sides is greater than 6, it will be greater than 0. The grain will grow. If the number of sides is less than six, the grain will shrink. It will not grow. So von Neumann, uh, this derivation for 2D grain growth only is based solely on curvature. So based on the number of sides, overall, the grain will either have a positive or negative curvature. And again, that will change whether it will shrink or grow. So let's put this into action. So I'm going to switch now to my presentation. So let's go let's see. I have, and I didn't erase them last time. The hardest right now. I don't want to steal my thunder. I have this nice picture, 2D grains. So I could tell now, we could calculate which grains are going to shrink and which grains are going to grow. So let's look at, let's say, for example, let's look at this grain first. How many sides does this grain have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight. Eight sides. So n is equal to eight. We know that's greater than six. So this grain will grow. So we know this grain is going to grow from the von Neumann principle. But we can kind of also see it here, right? So look at here. Let's look at this interface. This interface, this interface. We know that this side has a higher chemical potential, right? You can see that little bit of a curvature. We're positive here, negative curvature here. So we know atoms are going to flow from where? High to low. And then the interface is going to move in this way. So you can see at almost each of these interfaces, this grain is going to grow based on the curvature. But again, von Neumann already took care of that. So all you have to do is just count. So we know that at x, x is going to grow. What about, uh, let me, I should have looked at this beforehand. What about this guy? Let's look at this y. How many sides does this have? One, two, three, four, five. So n is equal to, let me double check that. One, two, three, four, five. n is equal to five at y. So y is going to shrink. And again, you could kind of see that here, right? Here, we are at positive curvature with, this inter with respect to this interface right here, right? There's a little bit of curvature there. So positive here, negative here, high chemical potential, low chemical potential, atoms flow over here, the interface moves in, that grain shrinks. So again, this power of the n equals 6 rule, for again, this only holds for 2D grains, 2D grains. We could tell which grains are going to shrink, grow, or not grow, and just not change at all. Based solely on the number of sides. So we need to thank uh, von Neumann for this principle. Uh, and you can kind of solve all these problems just based on that factor alone. But again, you can still relate it to that curvature change chemical potential. This is all interrelated. And we're going to finally wrap this up with uh, Oswald ripening uh, in the next video. So uh, again, please stay safe. If you have any questions, always be free, uh, you know, answer or email me, ask questions. Uh, and yeah, I hope you have a great day. And uh, yes, I hope you enjoyed uh, learning about material science. Have a good one.